the NDIS housing challenge and how the private sector is meeting it. Hi, I'm Paul Ralftree and I am the CEO of Projects RH based in Sydney. Today I am joined by the co-founder and managing director of CPP Developments, Colin Furphy. Colin is also based in Sydney. Hello Colin. Hi Paul, how are you? Good, thank you sir, and you? Yeah, really well, thanks. First a little about Colin. Colin is an entrepreneur experienced in property education, property development and investor relations. His academic studies are in property, management, education and leadership. Colin has lived and worked in Australia, Africa and Asia. Projects RH is proud to be working with Colin and CPP Developments. Colin, could you, for our overseas audience in particular, explain a little bit about the NDIS, what it is and how it works? Yeah, sure. So the NDIS stands for the National Disability Insurance Scheme in Australia. And this is a scheme designed to make living easy, uh, easier and more affordable for people who have disabilities. Uh, so the th sort of things that it covers are their accommodation, their medical expenses, and their care expenses. And then depending on the complexity of their disability, it'll also look after their general living expenses as well. Okay. So how many participants are there in the NDIS scheme? Yeah, currently there's approximately 458,000 participants on the scheme in Australia. And it's forecasted to be over a million by the time by 2030. That's really large numbers, and a, a share of those are entitled to a housing benefit, which is important. So, why does the NDIS look to the private sector for housing? Well, the federal government doesn't want to own and manage the properties itself. Um, it wants to give the opportunity to the private sector to properties. And then in return, the federal government is giving them 20-year um, commercial leases on the properties um, at a rental value approximately four times higher than your standard rental value currently. That's incredibly attractive, particularly if you've got a a government department, which means the government providing a guarantee that these rents will be paid. Wow. Yeah, that's right. And your annual return, you're looking at between 10 and 13% per annum, if not more, um, which equates to anything up to $130,000 per year. Per that, that return is ungeared, is it? Yeah, that's positively geared, though. Okay. That's really, that's very attractive, given that it's coming from government. So, yeah, that's right. So what does a property development look like that attracts these type of uh, investment opportunities? So the development needs to be, needs to incorporate disabled living into the plan. So um, it can range from being, a an apartment block that has a number of NDS apartments in it to a single house um, that can look after one or two tenants and the accommodation needs to be within close proximity to the commercial precinct public transport and uh, like easy to uh, yeah supermarkets and so on there as well okay so they're the key features of of the environment. What does the NDIS house look like or apartment look like? And is it different to most other apartments? No. So the idea behind the whole NDIS scheme is to have the tenants blend into your everyday community. So what they're looking for is to do developments that look 
like a normal house or a normal apartment block and can't be easily branded as a disabled person's house or a disabled living complex. So that they really want the developments to pretty much look, look normal. And then for the bigger developments, they really want the uh, apartments to be molded, the disabled apartments to be molded in amongst the normal living apartments. So if you're doing an apartment block, for instance, and you've got 40 apartments on there, if you can make four to eight of those apartments NDIS apartments, you'll get a lot of incentives, extra incentives from the government to subsidize the interiors of those apartments. Right. Um, but then you'll also, you'll still get the 20 year lease on top of that for those apartments. Whereas if you were to make all 40 of those apartments and the IS, they wouldn't subsidize the interiors for you on that because they sort of see that as being ostracized an ostracized setup for people with disabilities in the neighborhood. I see. It would look, feel like an aged care facility, a, a specialized building. Yes. I can understand yeah, right. it because many of these people are relatively young and, and want to be in, in community. I mean, it's sort of part of the NDIS is to make them feel good. Um, yeah, it's make them feel good and make them feel included. So how much does the NDIS pay per participant per annum? So when it comes to the accommodation side, the NDIS will pay up to $130,000 per participant per year for the lease of their apartment. Okay. And if there's more than one person living in that apartment, you get an extra $40,000 per person on top of the 130. But that's paid directly by the department, isn't it? It's not paid out of the person's allowance. No, that's paid directly by the government's department itself. And, that, and, and that's really important to investors. Yeah. So how yeah, the much... the government looks after that payment, not the tenant. So how much does it cost extra to build, an, a, a, say, an apartment to meet the requirements of the NDIS compared to a normal apartment? Uh, if it's... If you're building from a raw block of land... To a brand new apartment, it only costs about forty or fifty thousand dollars more to adjust it for disabled living. Um, and the reason it costs that much more is you need proper certified people to come through and make sure that it's compliant with the federal government's regulations on disabled living. Mm -hmm. And if the auditors come through and tick all the boxes on the list that need to be ticked, you'll then get the lease for the 130000 a year. If you don't, if you decide to take spending shortcuts and don't meet the criteria, the only other potential customer that you have is either um, a disabled person who can't get government assistance or one of the not-for-profit organisations, but the return from that is much much lower than from the federal government so my understanding is that cpp developments is, is taking on a number of projects but you have three different projects one in sunbury one in cleveland and one in lakemba perhaps you could share with us what they're like and how they function if we could start with sunbury yeah sure so sunbury is a standalone house that we're working on and there uh, we're taking a raw block of land and we're building it into a three bedroom uh, three bedroom house that's designed specifically for disabled people to live in and with that there once that's completed we'll get a 20 year lease from the federal government for that now the good thing about this block is it's close to public transport, infrastructure is being expanded as we speak by the state government down there. They're building a new railway line and train station close by. And currently it's with walking distance to the shops and it has a number of buses stopping at the front. The other big tick on the, uh, tick on the list is that it's 
a, a flat block of land. Um, so it's easy to build disabled housing on that site. Okay. Then the second one was Cleveland up in Queensland. Yeah, so Cleveland is another interesting one. The It's an apartment block with 40 apartments in it. And we, with that project there, we're taking the incentives from the government to use 10 to 20% of the apartments for NDIS. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have eight NDIS apartments in that development. And with that, there the development is 500 metres from the commercial precinct, pretty close to the train station. And the interesting thing about this site too is that it's a high-end property development. So the original apartments all have um, 360-degree ocean views and they've got landscape behind them and ocean and the islands in front of them. But the great thing is that the NDIS apartments in the development will also get the same views. So they can actually feel privileged to live there when they do because it'll be a luxury set up for for them as it is for everyone else in the apartment block and the whole idea behind that is to make them feel and live like the people who are their next door neighbors so they aren't being ostracized and they can have a common conversation with everybody excellent and then the third one we'll talk about today is lakemba in beautiful sydney yeah and lakemba uh is a bigger much bigger development so this is a 7,000 square metre block of land and the area has just been rezoned uh, and reprioritised by the state government. So it can be commercial mixed use up to eight storeys high and uh, this particular zone has been prioritised by the state government because they really want developments to happen along the street. And this is a main road with three, three lanes going each way and then the way the property development will be set up is you'll have the commercial space being accessed by the main road and then the residential car parks being accessed by the neighborhood road behind the block and it'll be 150 apartments plus three and a half thousand square meters of commercial space um, and 24 ndis apartments there now the other interesting thing about this space is it's uh Lakemba's more of a culturally focused suburb in sydney and they focus more on the bangladesh and muslim community in that area mm -hmm. and because of their their background and their cultural beliefs families like to stay together so a lot of people will buy the apartments off the plan to be able to stay in the same neighborhood as their families and then there's also quite a, a long waiting list for people who are disabled and on the NDIS in that particular neighbourhood. And to we more than likely be able to have all of the apartments leased off the plan because of the need for people to stay within their cultural community in that area oh, whilst and getting their attention for disabilities. And great location to public transport. Yeah, that's right. It's only 400 metres from the train station. Yeah. Well, Colin, any final comments? Uh, just an overall comment would be to seriously consider investing in the NDIS because whilst it's a new concept, it's going to be a concept that's going to be around here for a long time to come and it provides you a steady return guaranteed by the federal government. Colin, thank you very much for being with me today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks for inviting me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time.